A very warm welcome to this second part of this series about bracing ourselves for the 26th of October. Now, one has to be very careful. As I've always said, politicians never speak their mind. Yeah, They'll never po call a press conference to give you their strategy and their game plan and their end game. <laughs> never ever. And to make matters worse, Kenya is infested with propaganda, jubilee propaganda. Okay? I mean, the whole country, news has just become propaganda. Let me just give you a quick example. Uh, Moha, Mohamed Ali, decides to welcome Uhuru to Nyali, his constituency. Okay? He's a rookie MP, yeah? And as you know, those guys, those security guys always infiltrate these crowds. They know these guys are rookie. Therefore, they decide to take advantage for propaganda reasons. So according to Moha, he's told by uh, Wanainchi, yeah, that it's good he welcomes the president. So he falls into the trap and uh, welcomes the president, yes. That's it, he just gives a brief speech, says, uh, talks very wisely, actually, yeah, says that, um, uh, uh, welcome to Nyali. Uh, we as Nyali people are going to vote for the person who's going to bring a change uh, for us and the constituency. End of story. Huh? Jubilee uh, propagandists are online in the next second. Big headlines. Moha defects to Jubilee. <laughs> in fact, what happened, a distressed uh, NASA supporter uh, called me, you know, like there was a fire somewhere. Hi, Chris, have you heard? Moha has uh, defected to um, Jubilee. Who can you trust? They're almost in tears. And of course, you know, I'd not heard this news. I didn't know what was going on. So I kind of like believed it. <laughs> yeah, that's how powerful propaganda is. Yes. And uh, Jubilee are masters of propaganda. Okay. So in this kind of atmosphere, it's very difficult to know what's going on and what's happening. Now, I promised uh, to reveal a new Jubilee strategy to you. Yeah. In the last, last episode. And let's go right on to it. Now, interestingly, it's concerning Mombasa. You will have noticed that uh, Jubilee are making a very big effort in Mombasa. Now, if you see one of my earlier uh, postings, I've posted a video where uh, it was impossible for the president to address people at Congoya Market because the motorcade approached the market, uh, slowed down, you know, like he wanted to stop to greet Wanainchi. Hi! Then when he saw the hostility, he drove off. A lot of parts of Mombasa are like that uh, for the president, okay? So in case you're confused, you're wondering, Kwani Mombasa me badlika? Just remember the power of propaganda. The power of Jubilee propaganda. Yeah? The reality of the ground is very different from the propaganda. Anyway, so why is Jubilee paying so much attention to Mombasa? Yeah? Why are they spending so much money in getting defectors, having big rallies in Mombasa? Why? Why Mombasa? Now, very interesting. According to some of my inside information, there's some there's a radical arm, you know, there's some radical jubilee diehard, diehards, yeah, who do not think uh, secession is such a bad idea, yeah. You know, uh, some of these people are filled with so much hatred, yeah, for the other side, so much tribal venom, yeah, for the other side, and I think this is clear. You've all you've seen it uh, online in the way they speak, yeah. Uh, you know, if you compare NASA comments and Jubilee comments, it's very easy to see which ones are more poisonous. If you compare the behavior, it's very easy to see this, yeah? So they're filled with a lot of uh, tribal venom. And some of them don't think it's such a bad idea to secede. Now, the only problem is that uh, when they secede, uh, <laughs> the Central Republic of Kenya will not have any ports. They'll not have any coastal town, Okay. Now hold on to that thought for a minute. Now the other thing as a strategist, you've got to be able to look into the future and project the future and uh, take care of all eventualities that may come into the future. Okay? Now one very huge eventuality which uh, very few people are talking about is that if elections don't happen on 26th of October, the next big agenda on the table will be, you've guessed it, secession. Now when this discussion comes to the table, uh, one of the beginning chips would be looking back at the 20, October 26th election, yeah? Now, assuming that Jubilee are going to go into those elections alone, uh, what it will mean is that some constituencies or some polling stations will not record any activity, yeah? Or very minimal activity, okay? And it is possible to foresee a situation whereby 
the negotiations will be centered around where there was activity in terms of polling stations. Now, do you start to get my drift? And therefore, Mombasa may be important. Okay? Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying this is what's going to happen. I'm talking, I've now just gone very deep into the strategies, the strategies of a party. Uh, I know most of us do not have any experience in uh, advising a political party or being one of the chief strategies. Yeah? Well, I, neither do I. But one of the privileges I've had is that I've sat down with people who have been chief strategists or politicians right from the days of Moi. Yeah? And the kind of insights I got were just crazy. Okay, so I have a very good idea of what's happening deep, deep inside in the strategy uh, making table. Okay, so what a strategist is supposed to do, they're supposed to cover all eventualities, all loopholes, and so on and so forth. So they're allowed to go beyond dreaming. Yeah, as long as there's a possibility, even a slight one, they're supposed to be able to cover all their bases. Yeah, so I hope you understand that from that kind of perspective. So if it ever comes down to secession, yeah. Uh, the coast is a very, very important strategic point, okay, as far as uh, uh, the Jubilee Party is concerned. There's another very good reason, okay, which is more practical, more immediate, etc., etc., yeah? And this is the fact that it is impossible to do major uh, deals which do not involve Mombasa. Let me rephrase that. It's very difficult to do a great number of uh, corrupt deals, yeah, major corrupt deals, without involving Mombasa. Okay. Now let me just give you a recent example. You remember the maize scandal, yeah, which in involved the importation of uh, huge amounts of maize. Yes, that's one example. Now you also know that some power brokers are involved in uh, the importation of illegal items. Yes, you already know that. You also know that. Uh, from the days of President Jomo Kenyatta, there were some major uh, corrupt, uh, very high, <laughs> very high up officials who were involved in the export of illegal items. E.g., I'm talking about uh, ivory, etc., etc. Yeah. Now you begin to get the gist. So Mombasa is a, an, ex an extremely important strategic point. Therefore, assuming that uh, on 26 things don't go too well. Yes, the Jubilee side would still want to have some semblance of influence in Mombasa, yeah, so that even if most of the country is not governable, at least Mombasa would be a place where they'd be able to claim that we have some semblance of support, yeah. So it's, Mombasa is very important strategically, and this is why there have been so much campaigns within uh, Mombasa. Now let's take a short break. When we come back, we'll talk about the... NASA's secret weapon for the 26th year, then we'll be able to tie this up. Yeah, I'll be back in a minute. Welcome back. The situation politically in Kenya now is such that uh, NASA are much more in control than they have ever been. Yes, candidate Raila Odinga is much more in control than he has ever been yeah, in the many bruising battles he has had against opponents. What do I mean? You see what has been happening in the past is that uh, this thing has always been fixed. Yes. So in 2007, Ray Lodinga went out, campaigned, campaigned, he got his votes, spent money, etc., etc. Kumbe, somebody somewhere was just uh, smiling and laughing and mocking him. Because what did they do in the end? They rigged the election. 
yeah, they fiddled with the figures, yes, so that his votes did not matter. Okay, 2013, same story. 2017, same story. Okay, now all those times, the other side has been in control. Okay, now for the first time in the career of uh, Raila Odinga in these uh, epic battles, he is in complete control. I think now you're starting to get the gist of uh, what I'm trying to say here. Okay, now whatever Jubilee are planning, yeah, because we've had various reports of uh, how they're planning to fiddle here, fiddle there, and so on. Eh? We've also had reports of how, uh, as I've always been saying here, Jubilee do not want to go into any elections election which they cannot win okay so they'll have to make sure that whichever the election they go into they can go into one that they, they can win yes so even after immediately after the um, supreme court ruling jubilee was still in control yeah they were forming the narrative going to parliament changing the laws blah 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 they've always been at the forefront forming the narrative yeah but hey all of a sudden nasa come up with this thing no reforms no election. Suddenly it's out of their hands. Then to make matters worse, Raider leaves the country. <laughs> now, now, what next for Jubilee? Now, I'm analyzing this, this totally from a political point of view. So, Jubilee supporters don't get feelings. Uh, I'm not against anybody. I'm just analyzing it from a purely political point of view. Okay? And you can see politically that uh, Jubilee have been squirming from the various different statements that we should. Oh, we don't care if Raila does not uh, take part in the elections. Oh, Raila must take part in the elections. You know, somebody has even filed a, a case compelling Raila. <laughs> I'm telling you, Kenya is an interesting country. Compelling Raila, he must turn up for the election. <laughs> the sum total of this, because you have to believe me, yeah, those who help uh, Jubilee to rig elections, those who are behind the scenes, who do all the dirty work, they are what we call control freaks. They like to be in control of everything. Yeah. So I can imagine how infuriated these people are <laughs> that they are not in control of all the factors. Okay. They they may be in control of IBC and what IBC does, but they're not in control of one of the most important components, the opponent, because no opponent, no match. Yeah? Now, a long time ago, I used to play a game, and the most frustrating thing is that you prepare for a game, you do all your strategy, you do your training, you train for moves, and so on, and you dress in your kit, and you know, you've got all that nervous tension of a game, you know? Yeah? <laughs> Those who play sports will know what I mean, yeah? And then, you, you go, you march, you walk onto the field, or you run onto the field, you're all excited, you're flexing your muscles, the opponent has not turned up. There's nothing more disappointing than that, yeah? Yeah, so you can imagine what these control freaks are going through. Meanwhile, NASA has left everybody guessing as to what the next move is. Okay? Now, I am in receipt of a lot of information about possible NASA strategies uh, that, they may, uh, that they might be up to. Yeah? But you'll forgive me, I will not share them here because some of the people who shared them uh, with me in confidence, yeah, uh, made me promise that I will not share them before the 26th, okay? Uh, of course, they do not want the other side to know what is happening or what their strategy is. Eh? And I think that is fair, yeah? I do not want to enter the game and uh, because definitely if I enter the game by telling people what's happening, I'll be entering the game and I'll, also, I'll actually be rigging the, the results because I'm, I'm leaking information <laughs> from one of the sides to the other side, yeah? So let's just talk in general terms, yeah, and try and understand what's going on here. That will help us more, okay? Because even whatever I was told, there's no guarantee it's true, yeah? Okay? Yeah. So, now, I want you to realize how significant this fact is, that the mighty Republic of Kenya government, yeah, the dictatorial corrupt Jubilee government is not in control of the 26th. That is very significant. You know, it's like playing poker, yeah, where you're totally, you have no idea the kind, kind of cards your opponent has, yes, and you're just waiting for them to play, you have no control, yeah. Now, those who play cards know that that is a very bad position to be in. And it's the same in politics, yeah, especially where Jubilee are, yeah, control freaks, uh, rigors of election, etc. It is very important for them to be always in complete control of what's going to happen next, yeah. And here, they're definitely not. 
Now you can go to rallies all over the country, scream at people, say Raila is uh, Mganka, say what, say Raila is the problem in Kenya politics, say, you know, if he doesn't turn up for the election, you'll be sworn in. You can make all kinds of noises all over the country. But that does not change the fact that you have no idea what is going to happen on the 26th of October. And that is NASA's secret weapon. Now, if I can just remind you of the events uh, following the announcement of who was the winner after the August 8th polls, you will remember how Rengo talked, yes? He said, we are not going to court. And he was so firm about it, yes? So people were asking, what are you guys going to do next? <laughs> now, I love Senator James Orego, yeah? The guy, he must have been uh, an actor once, once upon a time. Eh? He'll a drama he can produce, yeah? You know the, rep the response, you know, the, the foreign media kept on asking, yeah? Now, what is this, what are these other constitutional means you're going to use if you're not going to go to court, yeah? Now, this Muzungu asked him, yeah? Now, you know these Muzungus have a problem sometimes. They assume that uh, Africans are not very bright because the color of their skin is dark, you know, etc., etc., yeah? And uh, actually, by assuming that about Senator Rengo, I a a wrong number. Senator Rengo is sharp. <laughs> anyway, so this, this was Senator Rengo's response, and it really entertained me, yeah? He said, uh, well, there are a lot of constitution, uh, constitutional means you can use. There's a whole lot, you know, there's a whole cocktail of, uh, I believe those are the exact words he used. There's a whole cocktail of uh, things you can do. <laughs> now, to be honest, that also left me confused, yeah? I started asking myself, you mean there's a whole lot of things these guys can do? Like what? And you know, he didn't even mention mass action. He said there's a whole cocktail. Now, cocktail means kuna bitu kada, bitu kada waneza kufanya. Many, many things they can do. Okay? So I can imagine this Mzungu journalist looking, you know, all puzzled with, you know, his specs, nini, all puzzled, confused. Yeah, if it was a cartoon, they'd have circles going around his head. <laughs> yeah? So after these statements, uh, Jubilee now started appealing. Yeah? They started, Walianza Kupembeleza Nasa. No, Raila, please just go to court. No, you know, please, you guys go to court. Don't bring chaos to Kenya. You must go to court. Yeah? And they, they boomeranged, you know, they seesawed between threats and cajoling and so on and so forth and reasoning. Yeah? Raila, you, I mean, Raila, you must go to court. Nini, blah, blah, blah. Then suddenly, on the day of the deadline, yeah, the last day that they could actually file a petition, who comes walking into court? Raila Odinga himself, followed by Kolozo Musioka. Shortly after that, James Orengo came in carrying files and files and heavy books and papers and documents and filing the petition. <laughs> they left Jubilee guessing up to the very last minute. Okay, So this is the same or about 26th October. Of course, uh, this time it's much more complicated because uh, people have to make travel arrangements to go and vote, yeah? Uh, so it will be, you know, uh, they can, they're, they're limited this time to the kind of surprises they can pull off, eh? But uh, they can do anything, yeah? And that's, that's what really is arcing and uh, irritating, yeah? The control freaks within Jubilee, okay? Now, if I can give you some inside information, one very huge difference, and I mean I've mentioned this in an earlier recording, earlier recording I did three, four months ago, one big difference about this time round is that Raila has got a very serious think tank behind him. Guys who sit down and they strategize and they plan and they look at things from every possible angle. Yeah? So that when he makes a move, they've already thought it through and they already know if this goes wrong, there's this plan B and so on and so forth. So if you can look at 26 on a positive point of view, yeah? at least for long-suffering Kenyans who want to change, then it should be exciting and there should be, you know, the suspense should be exciting and should be enjoyed because nobody has an idea of what's going to go down on the 26th. Until next time, this is Chris Kubekuja.